people are very cautious and sacred about who they let in their inbox. There's no better way to have that person get to know you um, than to send them a direct message um, in, in that in that uh, medium. And autoresponders, uh, a, a follow-up series, really just automates that process for you. All right, it's time for another episode of Girl the Dream today. If you're being invited into somebody's inbox, please treat with care. Behave yourself in there. We're going to talk about everything to do with email. And we have a special guest. We do. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a great show. Coming up next. Welcome to the most indispensable show for people doing the hard work of growing your business. It's the marketing podcast by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs. Welcome to Grow the Dream. All right, welcome to episode 56 of Grow the Dream Show, Rod. There's nobody to sing a jingle today. No, there isn't. Uh, I'm not sure we can actually do the show appropriately now. I know. Although, I guess you could argue we haven't had an appropriate jingle for a while. Oh, that's the truth. Yeah. Josh. I know. We are going to have fun today making fun of Josh because he is not here. And uh, he <clears throat> apparently has a scheduling conflict. So, you know, <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but in his stead, we have a millennial with us. I don't know how this happened. We didn't plan it this way. But Tom, uh, Tom Tate from A Weber is uh, is here with us. Tom, how are you? I'm doing great. You know, despite having a lot of gray in this beard, uh, I, I am by definition a millennial. So I yes. see. Okay. Well, I'm not going to ask you for you know the specifics on that. Sure. But uh... <laughs> just for the record, Tom, I am definitely okay with gray. Oh yeah, me too. Absolutely. As you might be able to tell, I would take any <laughs> yep, yep. any hair uh, myself. Um, <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I should just be grateful for what I have. I guess. Yeah, exactly. Right. I enjoyed it while it lasted, but it's 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 gone now. I gave up the charade. You used it up quickly. I did. Yeah. So uh, we are excited about having you here today, Tom, because uh, you know one of the things that we always set out to do on this show is help explain technology and explain marketing stuff and help people get the most out of it. And there is an area that I feel like a lot of marketers just ignore because it's been with us for so long. Um, it, of all of the marketing technologies, I think it could be one of the oldest. It, it predates the web. <laughs> well, uh, as far as digital sure. marketing. Yeah, I mean, that's what I mean, like okay. di digital marketing te sure. technologies. Yeah. It predates the web. I think it actually predates me. Um, She's really old. I know that spam is not older than me, but email, I think, is. <laughs> so uh, so uh, we're yeah. going to talk about email today. I'm excited about this. Yeah, yeah I, really, I really am, too. I'm looking forward to it because I think that be, we get caught up oftentimes with the shiny object syndrome, and uh, social media is the shiny object syndrome, although shiny objects are kind of fun and attractive, too. So there's obviously there's a big value in social media. Um, but I think that because of that, sometimes we overlook the tried and the true and the effective um, and, uh, and so that, that so many, I know of, uh, our listeners and clients should all, uh, be doing email grabs, should be creating email lists, should be curating those and then using them effectively. So I'm really looking forward to uh, what Tom has to say to, um, get us up to speed on how we should be most effectively doing that in 2016. Yeah. So Absolutely. that's one of the reasons we invited you. But uh, before we get into, you know, all of the email stuff, um, let's let's just get to know you for a minute. I, I know that um, uh, you didn't uh, you, you haven't spent your entire career at AWeber and I'm not sure how long you're there now, Tom. Sure. So let's talk about, you know, kind of what's your background and how long have you been at AWeber and, and uh, what all you do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, you know, went to went to college with the aspirations of being, you know, the, the next great American novelist, um, like Ooh. like many uh misguided youth do. Um, so I studied English uh, literature and uh, oh a bit my. of journalism and history in, in college. Oh, no, I actually went okay. on to get my, I went on to get my master's degree in publishing, um, traditional publishing, really? you know, of course, you know, kind of a, a, I don't want to say dead, but. So but, what year was this time? You know, morphing industry. Um, so I got my master's in 2010. In oh, publishing. Yes. Wow. In publishing. Yes. Um, very interesting yeah, decision, truly. life decision that I made. Right. <laughs> um, I ended up in, I ended up in digital anyways. Right. So, uh, you know, shortly after college, I, I began working for a digital agency, uh, and we were primarily developers. 
Um, so we were all developers. We were working with uh, other agencies, uh, so marketing agencies, design agencies that didn't have that development arm uh, would partner with us to build all the awesome things that they wanted to build. Um, so that gave me my, my digital experience uh, and also gave me the opportunity to work with a lot of great uh, marketing firms and a lot of great uh, design firms in Philadelphia. So this is all, I, I never really strayed too far from the Philadelphia area, except um, my undergrad was at University of Delaware. Um, so uh, yeah, got, got into digital, fell in love with digital, even though I had like these traditional aspirations of, you know, writing books on that were printed on paper, you know, that weird thing that uh, people <laughs> buy. Uh, they really do still and, buy and, them and amazingly. A, yeah, we still chop down it, trees to make them apparently. Yep. <laughs> It's, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, uh, even though I had all these aspirations, I fell in love with digital. Uh, I fell in love with email. Uh, and then I learned, yeah, it was a surprise to me that um, A. Weber, you know, and A. Weber has been around for 16 plus years um, as an email service provider. I had no idea that they were located 30 minutes from my house. You know, so here was this big uh, kind of uh, mammoth of, a, of an organization uh, that's been in the, the industry for so long that I've stumbled across um, amongst all the other email service providers. I had no idea that they were so close. Um, so uh, there was a project management position that opened up at Aweber that oh, I ended boy. up applying for. So I actually ended up as the marketing project manager at, at Aweber. And I told the team when I started, my goal as a project manager is to work myself out of a job. Good. Right? Like I, I, I want to get this team to a point where you don't need me anymore, you know? And slowly the percentage of project management that I was doing began to decrease while the percentage of uh, product marketing that I was doing would increase to the point where I was essentially doing the job of a product marketing manager. Um, and that essentially became my, my, my role here. So now I'm the uh, product marketing manager at Aweber cool. um, and I'm a huge evangelist. Uh, so any opportunity I have uh, such as this one, you know, just to talk about how awesome email is for entrepreneurs, how awesome email is for small businesses. Uh, I just love to jump on it. Ah, oh, that's really great. Well, um, I, I also noticed that you guys, and this is what sparked us reaching out to you, um, started sure. for the first time. I think it's the first time. I'm not aware of it, this, this ever been done, uh, being done by AWeber in the past, but you guys started a podcast last year. Yes. Uh, so the Ask Me About Email Marketing podcast uh, is our first kind of venture into podcasting. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. So the, the format we're just trying to get right. Like, I don't know how much, uh, format tweaking you guys did in the early days of your podcast. Um, but it's, it's definitely like something that I'm experimenting with just to get it right. There's an evolution uh, I feel like involved. I always will be, but yeah, yeah, we, we keep having the long form versus short form discussion. <laughs> you know, should we go long? We tried, awesome. we tried sure. for a while to yep. go like, let's keep it at 40 minutes, you know, and then. And then, then we heard from people. No, we like it when you go longer. So we, you know, we're we're at an hour right now. So. Plus, there's three of us, and two of us have an awful lot to say. So yeah, and the other one isn't yeah. here today. So <laughs> <laughs> so uh, awesome. Yeah. So uh, well, we uh, we're excited about this now. Of course, Aweber to me, I've I've had my account. I mentioned this just before we went on air, but I've had my Aweber account since 2007. I bought awesome. it right after the very first internet marketing conference that I ever went to. Um, and uh, it was where I discovered that there were geeks like me who spent their time testing and measuring stuff, <laughs> you know, sure. and, yep. Yep. and it, you know, and I learned about copywriting and like, you know, there were some skills that I just didn't imagine existed in, you know, the real world <laughs> uh, that, um, that, you know, I, I picked up at this conference and everybody said, you have to have a web and always think about the strength of a Weber as autoresponders because, um, the other platforms that existed back then, and I know there are, there are many more today that are on the market, and and uh, you know we even use some other tools, you know, which I'll I'll just get that out now and clear my conscience. Uh, but we we sure, you know sure. there are other there are other tools that have 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 somewhat come along. But you guys, a Aweber, especially back then, th there was just not a better platform to handle autoresponders, and every internet marketer that I met made it clear that if you don't have autoresponders, you're, you're not going to be effective online. And I'm amazed to this day. So here it is, 20, uh, so this is almost years later. I'm amazed to this day about how many businesses do not understand the power of automated follow-up and, and how it works and why it works. 
Um, and so that's one of the like the first things that I think we should talk about right out of the gate Absolutely. here is is you know what is it that you've seen uh, and and especially now that you're you're so closely tied in with one of the industry leaders and pioneers in in autoresponder technology sure. you know what is it what is it that we're missing if we don't have this uh, this this tool in our in our bag of tricks yeah it's interesting that you say that too uh, the history of a Weber is actually the company was founded on the autoresponder, not just the general, you know, email newsletter, right? Uh, the broadcast. Uh, so it, it's it's pretty cool that we we've we've had traditionally that reputation of being the go-to place for autoresponders, and it's it's quite frankly my favorite aspect of the product. Um, and and I'm not going to make this a product pitch, but sure. Uh, it's so funny to hear in 2016 to hear marketers talk about uh, lead nurturing, a new thing. Right. Yeah. You know, like, give it a new name. Like, you like know? It's, yeah. It's, it's part it's of the crazy. growth hacking, like, like, right? <laughs> yeah. It's so funny to hear you know people start talking about it like it's this this new revelation that they woke up one day and they were in the shower and they thought like hmm, maybe I should nurture the relationships that I I'm making online in hopes that I can make a sale. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Because um, nobody's it's, had that thought before. Yeah, it's really, um, you know, so when you think about um, marketing from even before, you know, digital times, right? Before Mm -hmm. we had, before we had the web, before we had the internet, you know, it was all about making relationships uh, with uh, specific or individuals, you know? Um, And there's no easier way to uh, make a relationship than to send a message uh, directly into someone's inbox, you know, which is a very personal thing these days. People are very cautious and sacred about who they let in their inbox. So if Definitely. someone's going to opt in to hear from you, they're, they're actually saying like, I want to hear more from you, which is, uh, you know, a, a blessing. Um, there's no better way to have that person get to know you uh, than to send them a direct message uh, in, in that, in that uh, medium. And autoresponders, uh, a, a, a follow-up series, really just automates that process for you. Um, so you don't have to sit there and write an individual follow-up message for every single person. You know, you are setting up a series. Um, I, I hate to say set it and forget it. That's not a phrase that I like to use uh, because I don't think that that's the case. Right. I think you should build it um, and maintain it, test, iterate. You know, like you should always, your autoresponder series, uh, your follow-up series should always be um, something that you're looking at in terms of what can I optimize? I always tell people that every so often you need to sign up for your own autoresponder again. Oh, it's <laughs> and awesome. Just yep. because it's funny the things that you that you, you know I have done the set it and forget it thing, and sure. and uh, I will I will admit to having told some people that hey you just set this up and you and it just you know and I probably even said just forget about it just and but then when you go back and you look and sometimes you're like oh I had no idea I'm sending a yep. message that's totally out of date or whatever. But um, but you're right. I think that people don't realize that relationship with uh, the person who is is asking you to. They're inviting you. I like that terminology, by the way. I really like that. Inviting you into their inbox. Uh, that's that's also not only is it is it a welcome thing when they're saying, okay, go ahead and do stuff. But it, that relationship is one that can be really really strengthened if you handle your. Uh, automated nurture sequence or whatever you want to call it correctly, but it's sure. also one of the fastest relationships you can burn if you, <laughs> you know, if you don't do it right. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so you want to be careful. You don't want to um, oversend, obviously. Um, and, and it's it's all about you know trying to qualify and get to know the people who are signing up for your list, um, so that you can deliver them the best value. Um, you know, but I, I was, I had a conversation, uh, I did an interview for our podcast uh, a couple of days ago and uh, we were talking about brands, businesses, personalities online. They have, they always have these great about pages um, on their websites that no one ever goes to. You right. know what I mean? Like no one go- really like stumbles upon about pages as frequently as they used to back when, you know, uh, yeah. you know, 2005, everyone was getting into blogging. Um, so you have the opportunity to set up a welcome message um, that takes the best aspects of your about page uh, and deliver it, hand deliver it to somebody. Um, and I think that just general introduction of like, hey, you didn't know me, but now you know me, uh, can work wonders for you know continuing to nurture that that lead or that that relationship, right? Absolutely. I've yeah. seen some amazing things over the years. You know, in our own business, we uh, we are huge believers in email. 
And sure. I, I feel like it, it can be kind of the redheaded stepchild of a marketing program because people forget how valuable and important it can be. And um, in terms of return on investment, and I know this was probably one of the things that you guys uh, have measured greatly, but in terms of return on investment, email to this day, and I saw a stat recently, and I don't know, I, you know, different people measure this differently, but um, sure. you know, one stat that I saw not long ago was something like $60, $65 return for every one dollar you spend on email um and again i'm not sure how that was quantified and i didn't dig much sure, below sure. the surface but it's not inconsistent with numbers i've seen in the past and i can say that you know in terms of uh what i've seen with our own clients i have a great story we like to share with one of our own clients who had a fantastic lead generation tool in place and a small business, local service company, uh, they have trucks that go out to people's houses. I mean, they do, they do very, very hands-on stuff. And uh, their salespeople had a fantastic lead gen tool, and they were in the habit of closing about 20% of the leads that they were getting through this particular lead gen tool. And when we added some simple, automated little touches on a schedule that uh, that were triggered by this sequence when it uh, when you know when the person raised their hand, um, that closing ratio in that in that particular business from that lead gen tool went from twenty percent to almost fifty percent within a month of us awesome. putting that tool. So from that one channel, if you got zero additional new leads, that business they were closing one hundred and fifty percent more sales. <laughs> like you know. That's yeah, a from, yeah, from just that one, you know, one adjustment. And that's the power of little automated touches if you plan it out right. And uh, I'm yeah, sure you guys you, have stories. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's all about your strategy, right? And just stopping to think about the holistic, the holistic marketing strategy and how email fits in. Um, and in, in a lot of ways, I see it as a, a safety net for all the traffic that's coming into, uh, into your site, right? Like if you are honestly expecting... Um, the majority of your traffic to visit your site, you might buy right away, which typically, you know, isn't the case. Um, and then just know to come back, you know, like there are so many different ways that you can capture that traffic and nurture it. Um, and email I think is, is one of the most valuable, uh, but you know, there's just, uh, it's a lost opportunity if you're not engaging. Right. Um, certainly there are other channels that might have a higher ROI um, for you, you know, if, if, if you work on it and you test it, but, um, it's also kind of a, uh, it's, it's a low effort um, piece of the puzzle put in, right? To just capture all that traffic that might otherwise just sift out. So Tom, in, um, in your expertise and your experience with this now, w what are some of the biggest mistakes that marketers make when they are conducting an, e an email lead generation campaign? Yeah, I mean, I would definitely start with the the autoresponder, you know, just not having a welcome series set up. And when I say welcome series, that could be as simple as one email, you know, um, it could be two. Um, but if you simply just send out that, you know, confirmation, welcome to my, you know, welcome to my list, welcome to my newsletter or what have you. Um, and then you are just sending uh, your broadcasts, your one time messages to those subscribers. Um, you're missing out on a huge opportunity, like I said earlier, just just to introduce yourself um, to that new subscriber. Um, some of the really successful um, welcome series that I've seen, uh, if, if you have a product, uh, you could really have a product demo over the course of maybe three emails where you talk about a specific feature of your product or service. Um, if you're a content creator, creator, like if you're a blogger or a YouTuber, uh, why don't you just link your top three articles or your top three videos. And that's just going to drive more traffic back to your properties and just re-engage that subscriber. Uh, you might not have anyone, like somebody might not click on those at all, but for the people who do, um, what you're making at that point is is relational uh, deposits into your relationship. You know what Ooh, I mean? Nice. And I know uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, if you guys follow Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, he, in his book, um, uh, jab, 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 right hook. Yeah. He talks a lot about this where it's all about making the deposits before you ask for the withdrawal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, an email, automated email series is a great way to just make some some really fantastic deposits. Um, I, I'm trying to come up with a really good acronym for this and, you know, maybe you guys can help me. Uh, but R-O-M-U, right? So Romus, that's what I have so far. R-O-M-U. Okay. And it's not great, which is why I'm trying to uh, formulate a better <laughs> one. But 
uh, relevant offers of mass utility. Right? Ooh, okay. I think of automated emails as an opportunity for you to drop uh, these Romus, these relevant offers of mass utility on a subscriber who wasn't even ready for that, right? If you can blow away somebody uh, with something that is going to be relevant and of massive use to them, um, just because you know that the type of content they were engaging with on your site um, had them opt in, uh, you, you can kind of qualify them that way. If you can set them into a series where you're just going to give them uh, some of your most useful content for free with no ask, and you can do that one, two, three times in a row, uh, automate it. Um, when it comes time to make that withdrawal, like you're going to be in a fantastic position. You know, when you want them to try your product or service, purchase your book, uh, whatever it is that you do to monetize your business, um, dropping those relevant offers. Um, along the way is a, is a great way. So I would say the biggest mistake um, is either not putting someone, not giving someone the opportunity to get to know you better uh, and also not providing value before you ask for something in return. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I was going to ask. So it, it would, one of the big mistakes that is done in a welcome series is to immediately ask for something, immediately make a pitch before you've created a relationship. Yeah, I, I, I think so. And, and you can, and, and that's not to say that you should have a call to action. You know, I'm sure if I go and sign for some of um, a Weber's uh, follow-up series that we have, you know, for our own product, um, I'm sure that a lot of them at the bottom of the first email is start your 30-day trial today. Um, I'm, it's not to say that you shouldn't have the call to action in there. It just shouldn't be the basis for the for the right. email, right? Gotcha. It shouldn't it shouldn't be the main message. Yeah, I in like my that. you know, in my opinion, I feel I feel pretty strongly about that. So make deposits before you make withdrawals. I like I like that a lot. I, I think one of the things that I've run into over the years, especially with people who are new to the idea of, of of marketing via email and creating relationships via email, one of the things that they that often they don't understand is is why do I need a third party tool? Like, shouldn't I be able to just put up a form on my website and drop those into a spreadsheet or whatever, and then email those people from Gmail or whatever my you know, my, my email client or Outlook or whatever it is. And, uh, sure. and so, yeah. So how do you, how do you answer that question? Yeah. So you can definitely, um, do that at a very small scale. Um, you know, so if, if you're getting, uh, leads a week, you know, you can absolutely, uh, do that. Um, but there are the, the biggest issue is deliverability, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you're going to get flagged for spam. Um, if you're sending from your personal Gmail account to uh, 50 to 500 emails, and there's a cap too. I forget what the actual number is these days, but Gmail won't let you send, you know, over a certain. Yeah, there is a daily limit. A lot of people don't know it, but yeah, there is a daily yeah. limit, and you can run up against it with scripts too, which I found out. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's you know there is a there is a cap, um, but you know one of the things that we really pride ourselves in here is our deliverability, and that comes from. 15 plus years of building relationships, um, you know, with different ISPs um, and really working on our infrastructure to make sure that we're keeping spam out. Um, because every time that someone signs up for um, an ESP uh, and sends spam, uh, they're hurting the sending reputation of all the good guys using their service, you know. So um, not just Aweber, but all of the ESPs, um, it's in our best interest to keep spam out. Um, yeah. because it, it helps the reputation of everybody. So that would be the main reason I would say. Um, but then the other, uh, you know, main reason too, like you want to make sure your emails hit the inbox. So deliverability is important. Absolutely. Um, I mean, you're but, going through the trouble of creating the, the content, you know, why send it if it's not going to get to the destination? <laughs> if it's not going to box. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I, I totally, you know, support that is the number one reason. But, uh, the other thing is, automation, you know, so like you can't really set up an autoresponder with your personal Gmail account. Uh, but for all marketers, you know, it, there are a lot of marketers who live and die by the metrics and there are a lot who, who don't, right? But you still need them. Uh, you still need to be able to refer to uh, your statistics when needed. Um, so when you uh, sign up with an ESP like, like AWeber, uh, you're going to get uh, click tracking, open tracking, you know what I mean? Like you're going to get the statistics that are going to say who's opening emails, what links are they on, you know, what's, what's the, the, the overall rate um, of those things uh, so that you can continue to optimize your campaigns. You know, otherwise yeah. you're just sending it out into the ether 
assuming that people are opening it um, and you, you don't necessarily know how they're responding, right? Some so of the, statistics is huge. Yeah, some of the most powerful data that I ever come across in, in marketing comes from, especially when there's an established list that I'm sending to, and mm -hmm. you know that this list opens my emails at a rate of just, you know, let's say 30%. But when I wrote this particular subject line, you know, it only 20% opened it. Or when I wrote that other one, you know, 50% opened it, you know. So it's, it's like some of the most powerful data that you're ever going to find in terms of what people actually respond to, you know, <laughs> what they're interested yep. in, you know. What's well, the same concept, uh, you know, with a, with a tweet, basically. You know, you, have, you send out sure. some tweets that uh, you get one or two retweets and a couple likes, and you send out another one, similar topic, whole different um, uh, tweet, though. Uh, words wise and a similar topic and, and, and it could make it 30 or 40 re retweets, you know, yeah. in and, a 24 and, hour period. And I totally agree. And, and same with uh, that Twitter analogy, time of day is huge, right? Big so, time. you know, considering what time you send uh, a specific broadcast or a specific tweet uh, might also show that jump. So if you don't have that data to kind of uh, stimulate the right questions, um, you'll never be able to inform decisions for future campaigns. Do you find in uh, general that there's um, optimum times of day to send out an email to? The million dollar list? question right here. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a great question. And it's going to vary. It's really going to vary based on, on your audience, which is why you need to test these things. Um, I, I did hear some good advice last year. Uh, surprisingly, I'd never really heard this before. And I never thought about it this way before. But if um, if on your opt-in form, if your email field label is business email address, uh, you actually increase the rate of getting someone entering their business email address. Interesting. And then you, and then you know that you can send to them uh, during that kind of early business hours, right? Okay, their that's time smart. zone. And you can assume that they're getting into the office. This is an assumption, right? But it's worth testing. You can assume that they're getting into the office, they're checking their email, and you're catching them in a business mindset. You know, where they're, they're in their inbox and interacting with other business emails. So if you're promoting a product or a service that relates to someone's business, that's a great way to make sure that you're not getting their personal email address, sending it to them during business hours. That's excellent. They're ignoring it because they're on the job. You know, they're on the clock. Um, and then, you know, maybe they're interacting with it at 9 p.m. when they're going through their personal stuff. And at that point, they're not in a uh, mode to respond the way that you would want them to in a business setting. That's, so, that's a very um, interesting tidbit. I, I, for years, kind of defaulted to saying your primary email address, you sure. know, as a way to kind of make sure that they don't give me their crap one, <laughs> you know, that, yeah. that hey, because yeah, they're absolutely. just trying to get my free download or whatever. And so, you know, now yep. they're giving me that Yahoo email account that they don't ever, they haven't opened in 10 years, <laughs> you know. So even yeah. though they can still do whatever they want to, sometimes with just a little subtle suggestion, you say, hey, give me your primary email address, you know. And of course, some of that is you have to build up. I might, my emails are going to be important. The things I'm going to send you after sure. this, or but I like that idea about your business email, especially for B two B. I'm gonna, oh, yeah. I'm gonna test that. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's a good excellent. one. It's, it, yeah, really it's worth testing, and I would say test it because um, you might see a decrease in conversion rate, right? Sure. Yeah, that and you gotta ask, know that might be asking too much for some people, and that's important to 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 note. So you might have to weigh the pros and cons because you might see a decrease in. Uh, email submissions, uh, but knowing that they might be more qualified, you might be willing to accept that 5 yeah. or 10% decrease, depending upon what it is. Right? Especially if they're more qualified, which you may find out later, you know, and in the, in the, at the end, your conversion rate sure goes thing. up or something, you know. So um, one, of the, one of the questions that always, of course, comes up with email, um, in addition to things like, okay, you know, what should we do once we get an email address and, and you know, how, how should we think about, you know, that process and the systems around it? What are some of your favorite ways to get people to give up their email address? Yeah, so it, it's really interesting. I actually started a personal project um, where my incentive to join my list was every week I was going to give away a $5 Starbucks gift card. Oh. So I, and it's interesting, right? Because some people are willing to go pay uh, 6 to $10 per lead. Um, sure with Facebook advertising or some other thing. And I thought, you know, this is a personal project, a hobby almost. I'm not willing to pay that much lead, but I am willing to spend $5 a week, you know, and just give somebody a cup of coffee. And I ended up getting like 
60 subscribers in the first week hey. um, just through like promoting through some personal channels. So it was really surprising to me that like I didn't have a PDF. I didn't have an ebook. I didn't have a checklist. Like I didn't have any like asset other than the promise of uh, some good content um, and a, a, the potential to win a $5 Starbucks gift card. So like you can get creative with it that way. You know what I mean? Like that's one thing. Um, but really, I think it's all about uh, finding out why people are ending up on your property in the first place, um, trying to get to the source of what they're looking for, um, and then offer them a strong incentive that you've got it, right? Um, and I, I always tell people to start small uh, in the sense of, uh, so here, I'll break it down into like three tiers, right? Okay. So you, you can start really small and just say, um, you know, sign up for my email list. Uh, get the get the top five X, right? top five secrets to a, a winning YouTube video, right? Okay. Say you're a YouTube marketer. Top five uh, secrets to a winning YouTube video. Uh, that might be a blog post that you've already written, right? Sure. That might not be any new content. That might be content that you already had. So I would say start with repurposing content you already have um, into something like that. So uh, when somebody opts into that specific list, you will just redirect them to that blog post. You know, okay. Um, you don't have to do anything other than have the thank you page, you know, also redirect to that blog post. So um, that's an easy way to just test, right? People are coming looking for YouTube tips. You're going to give them five secrets. So the, the curiosity has been peaked, you know, so then, you know, see if people will, will jump in with that. Uh, the next thing I like to suggest is um, going one step further and producing a piece of content that specifically serves as a lead magnet. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of people, they default to, oh, I have to write the canonical 50-page uh, ultimate guide to YouTube marketing ebook. Um, but what they don't realize is that, you know, maybe a brand like HubSpot already has that canonical 50 page. Email. You know what I mean? Leave like it to HubSpot, man. Have, it's true. Yeah, like, yeah, they've already created it. Whatever it is, they've already got it. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it somebody's, already, <laughs> somebody's already created that. And for better or worse, that person has more credibility than you. You know what I mean? So I, I think before you go and spend working on all that, of though. your. Yeah, I mean, may, <laughs> may kidding, or may bro. not have more credibility than you. But, I'm uh, kidding. No, go ahead. <laughs> They certainly might have more traffic than you. So um, that they do, yeah. Before you go out of your way to either do it yourself, which is a huge undertaking, uh, outsource the writing, the design, the creation, whatever. Um, why not just start with something like a, a one-page checklist? You know, and you'd be shocked that your traffic might actually be more interested in a quick and dirty uh, ch checklist, which actually might provide more utility. Um, and you can make it unique uh, to you uh, and specifically unique to the uh, experience that your customer or your prospect is having on page. Uh, but start with something like midway there. And then as you develop the, the kind of uh, clout and your list begins to grow, um, that's when I think that you can test creating larger pieces of content, uh, white papers, you know, larger research uh, type of uh, pieces um, or ebooks. Um, and I find that they work best when you're in a very specific niche, right? Mm. So uh, if it's something really broad like YouTube uh, marketing, you know, it's someone else probably has already done it. But if you're in a specific niche and you have the opportunity to really produce that canonical piece of content um, and you are the go-to source uh, for all things, whatever it is, um, you should begin to think about investing in that. But I would say start with your your kind of uh, subscriber acquisition. Start start smaller uh, before you spend a lot of time and money kind of building that up. So I just want to encourage you that um, your appropriate use and pronunciation of canonical several times shows that your uh, <laughs> literature degree did sure, not go sure, to waste. Sure. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I'm a millennial uh, that was born, uh, should have been born in a different era. I, uh, I love it. Yeah, well done. Well, we geeks yeah. we geeks have had to learn the term canonical in the last few years because of canonical URLs. Oh, well, see, I, yep. what do I know? SEO. Absolutely. I just it's all part yep. of the SEO game. I just take it from Canon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, sure. yeah. So uh, uh, that's fun. So I, I like uh, I like the, the the advice that you're sharing a lot here with respect to you know what what might the leads already be interested in that might be willing to sign up and give them something perhaps start small and then grow from there. One of the things that I might add to that, which I think is is fun, is that 
we we used to really strongly work with a lot of clients to build a lead magnet. And, you know, the theory was, and, and, and I think to a great degree, this, this is still valid in a lot of cases, you create something that you would sell. Like people would find it so valuable they would actually pay you for it and then give sure. it to them, you know. Um, but what we found a lot of times is that people, uh, through various means that we, that we use, we found people didn't actually often read the content. You know, it's one thing to get somebody to sign up for your list, and it's another thing, you know, they're going to save it, they're going to stick it on their desktop, where I have, I probably have 60 PDFs sitting on my desktop right now that I plan to read someday, which, of course, is never going to happen. Um, but, Guaranteed. But what we found is <laughs> yeah. that because of the relevance question, which you brought up a few minutes ago with, with your autoresponder sequence, right? Your welcome nurture sequence, whatever you call that first few touches that you that you create. What we found is that sure. we would take the contents of the lead magnet, the PDF, the free report, the whatever, and send it out in little bite-sized nuggets as a, as part of the welcome series. Awesome. And people would say, oh, yep. well, did they, you know, they just read that. No, they probably didn't, <laughs> you know. And uh, I- that's a great assumption that yeah. people are not reading those larger those larger pieces. So, you know, if you're a photographer, instead of writing the ebook on, you know, how to do X in photography, uh, why don't you test out 50 stock images, you know, like a 50 stock image pack. And then there's like immediate utility, you know what I mean, that people sure. can use right away. And so- it has no, um, it, it's, it's a deposit, right? It's, it's a relational deposit. Uh, that you can almost guarantee someone's going to use and rather since, than just have a PDF in their downloads folder. Since you brought it up uh, a minute ago, HubSpot actually has a 300 stock image pack that they <laughs> that they've awesome. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So you know, as long as we're saying, hey, HubSpot has done it bigger than us. Yeah. So yeah. Right. So yeah, I want. I, for sure. I wanted but, to ask. But you know what? what? What marketers have that HubSpot doesn't have. Um, is a uniqueness and an authenticity, you know, mm. that you can really lay up on uh, on your site and the way you carry yourself in different social networks. I love HubSpot, HubSpot but, y- y- you know, like they are HubSpot. Yeah. Uh, so when you're out there marketing yourself, uh, really don't take for granted your authenticity and your uniqueness uh, because even though you have a 30 image pack versus a 300 image pack, you have special qualities that a larger corporation doesn't have. Right. You know? So I think that that's, um, that's a misstep that a lot of people make in email too, where they don't let themselves shine through. Um, and honestly, your email is only effect- as effective as your content is in it. Uh, so making sure that your content is is is, um, is a unique representation of you. Is that really sounded a lot like content is king. Oh That's boy. what I heard. <laughs> We've yeah, is that an ongoing feud? Yes. Here? Yeah, we've had that discussion once or Not twice. A feud so much as as much as just a constant and total misunderstanding between the uh, boomer and the millennial. Uh, actually, I think it is a feud, Tom. I, I would I would go with feud on this one. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I wanted to ask you, Tom, um, because I'm on blogs. Sure. Um, we had a guest on earlier, and Dave will get his name out. Uh, but I, that I had the data that showed how much stickier the long form blogs are. Um, you know, you do the, I mean, you know, three, four or 5,000 words and, um, and those over time, you know, when it's good content, but they actually will do better over a long period of time. Is there any way in that, in the, in which that relates to an email marketing campaign beyond just simply linking to that? Um, how would that work? Cause you were just talking about how, you know, do the shorter pieces, which makes a ton of sense to me, particularly within an email or. Um, for wanting to introduce people to you a little bit and create that relationship. But what about down the road when you're still curating and using that email list to continue to expand the relationship? What about the longer form? I mean, I, I think longer form absolutely has its place and it's going to depend on your audience. You know, like if your audience is is a bunch of millennials who want to consume super short form content, they just don't have time for 1500 words a day of, of reading, then, then you probably will see uh, your statistics and you know, your engagement reflect that. So I think it's important to know your audience. And I think it's important to, again, just be very mindful of the utility that you're providing. Um, if you are sending long form content, either by email or, you know, just driving, using email to drive back to your long form content on your blog, um, you know, still using best practices to make sure that you have very captivating headings and you're using headings and full quotes and all these different things so that even though it's a longer piece, people can still extract value out of it. I think that that's, that's the, the key, right? The key is value. Um, so, you know, whether you're delivering, um, 
that through email or, or your blog, as long as you're making it very apparent what the value is, I think that that, that is going to work, you know, long form, form versus short form. Um, I think short form emails that tease a long form piece of content is a great strategy. Um, you know, so sending a short email uh, that just, you know, carries that traffic over to um, your longer form piece of content is a really great, is a really great way to drive traffic. So let me ask you, is this a reasonable way to picture this? If you look at sometimes perhaps your email as like a headline and a drop head and your long form as the content of the story and you're looking to just grab people's attention right away, get their interest and then get them into uh, the full content that you want to provide to them. I think it's a great strategy. I, I like, so the first step there is actually getting the email opened, right? So right, getting, exactly. uh, getting a strong subject line, you know, would be your first, uh, your first line of attack there. Um, so yeah, I, uh, Derek Halpern is, what, is from social triggers. He's one of my favorite, uh, kind of, I guess, thought leaders in marketing. And he talks about the information gap, um, which is to have a gap of information between the subject line and the content of the email so that you pique someone's uh, curiosity. You know, you're just playing off of human psychology at that point. Uh, so like an example would be, uh, you won't believe this, uh, this secret trick that boosted my ROI 300%, right? Like it's, it's, when I read that subject line, I need to know what the secret trick is. I don't know like anything other than there's a secret, right? And right. I need to know what it, it is. It sounds like a BuzzFeed um, headline. I was going to say, it's <laughs> clickbait. It's clickbait. Yeah. Yeah. It, but that it, works. It is, It right? does so work. That's why they it, use it. It, it, works. it works. Yeah. And it's worth testing. Um, and it, it shouldn't be scammy, right? Because, right, right. you know, like. Because then you ruin your I relationship. Through, yeah. Like when I do click through, I expect him to tell me the secret. Yeah. I need to, um, I need you to deliver on your promise. Scam, right? right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm not uh, promoting clickbait in the sense of don't deliver, but you know, step one, get that subject line uh, clickable, and then when you get in there, um, you know, really tease out content, right? You know, uh, you give a good strong lead, um, and then maybe give a couple bullet points of like, you know, here's what you'll learn, you know, like here's what you're gonna take away from this. Um, don't give it all away, but give them enough again that you're almost really begging that, not begging that, but um, you're making it impossible for them to not want to get the full context, you know? And, and a lot of that is like all of like, like hyper relevance, like you said earlier. I mean, the more you know about your prospects and what they're interested in, and especially if you've set up some qualifiers, like the lead magnet itself qualifies some people out, they just, they're not going to be interested in it, you know? So you, you, know, you have some signals along the way, hopefully if you set it up, strategically, you have some signals along the way to know what they're going to be interested in. And that that allows you to do some of this. So how do you feel about the idea? I mean, you mentioned that the idea that millennials don't uh, tend to consume as much uh, or, or sure. maybe 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 bigger content. They have short attention spans. OK, I wasn't trying to say that, <laughs> but, you know, um, you know, uh, present company excluded. Yeah. OK. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? I, I mean, I. I probably shouldn't make that assumption that we all have shorter attention spans, but I think we definitely live in a time where attention is, uh, it's hard to come by. Um, and when you have somebody's attention, you really need to make the most oh, of that's the that truth. attention. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because you're, you're lucky, right? If you get someone's attention for five to six seconds, um, you're really in a great position these days. So you need to make the most out of that five to six and then turn that five to six into 30 to 60 and then maybe turn that 30 to 60 into four or five minutes, right? So how do you feel about content then? Let's say you have, um, you know, a steady stream of articles that you're pushing out to your to your email list because they're interested in, you know, news or updates or whatever it is about your, your niche. What do you think about the idea that maybe one or two of your bullet points, you know, with that gap that you talked about, gap to, from the subject line to the content, and then maybe sure. one or two short items, and then, a, you know, read the rest of this article or a click here so that you drive them back to your site. How do you feel about that strategy in general? That That's the, I, I mean, in my opinion, that's the move, right? Because the action is happening on your site. Um, you know, the, the, the site is your gateway to all your other things, your products, your services, your other content, um, other offerings that you might have. Um, you're going to get better analytics um, on your site, right? So you're going to get average time on page, uh, bounce rate, you know, like there's all these fun analytics that you're going to get. Like scroll um, depth if or, or heat maps or, you know, other maps, things. Scroll, yeah. Scroll data. If, if, you know, and if you're not using UTM parameters in your emails, 
um, so that you can track all this behavior in Google Analytics. Uh, please um, Google UTM parameters and, and try to start incorporating that into your email campaigns uh, because you know what you're going to get is from that email, um, you're not going to know how many how much how many minutes were spent reading that email because we just don't have that technology yet. It's like podcasts, um, right? We don't know how long they actually listen. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you don't you don't know. Yeah, exactly. We can measure so, downloads, um, but we don't know when you dropped off. You know? <laughs> yeah. Right, right, and and that becomes a, a huge issue when you're trying to optimize your your overall strategy and tactics. So, I absolutely recommend you know keep people in the inbox only as long as you need to. But drive drive over to your to your main property so that you can introduce them to other things. Uh, you know, the the overall user experience is probably better on your site. You know, than just in the inbox. Um, you'll have their attention. Uh, you'll be able to measure whether your emails are being uh, more effective. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's absolutely the move. I think we should do a podcast on UTM parameters. What do you well, think? he said to Google it, so I was just following the guest instructions. Well, yeah. they they own it now. You know, they bought uh, Urchins, which which, uh, yes. which was the platform, the software platform where UTMs were invented. Um, Google. Well, how come then the the, the first res- the, um, the first thing that popped up in Google is guest metrics? <laughs> Well, that's because Google is trying to uh, show the world. Uh, they're trying to pretend that they don't favor their own content. Yeah. <laughs> right. We will believe that for a moment. Yeah. But, the, I mean, that's the, that's the basis of Google Analytics is, is that Urchin's platform. And you can still license the, the, the software itself separately. But, anyway, that's just a geek moment for, for me because totally. I have to geek out on the geek stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll also I'll, – I'll, um, I'll vouch for that Kiss Metrics article though, because that's a really great introduction. So if, if you are good. listening, Perfect. interested, you Google it. That Kiss Metrics article is definitely a good uh, starting. Well, point. and you've read that means it's it's sticky um, on Google too, that's and, it's, yep. and it's got yep. you know I it's, it's got great content. It's probably two thousand words or three thousand words. We. Um, we uh, oh, crap, now we have to go at look at it. Yeah, Let's now see. the OCD in the in the in the publisher, the <laughs> yeah. editor over there is he's going to make. Oh, it. there's, it's full of graphics. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shiny stuff. Shiny objects. <laughs> yeah. Shiny stuff. <laughs> yeah, we like those. So uh, that's really fun. So I think I mean you know in terms of giving a, a, a business who might not have you know maybe invested a lot of time or energy into email, I think we've hit some of the major points here. You know, you've got to have. Um, oh my gosh! Look at that time. Wow. I know. This has been great. This yeah. has just flown by. You, sure. you got to think about, you know, h- how you attract people to sign up. Uh, you got to think about what value you deliver in the whatever it is that they signed up for. And then certainly the welcome series, all that stuff. I love your thoughts about creating relationships and delivering value. All of that stuff is really good. They're inviting you into their inbox. That's I a, love that because it gives a whole different depth of responsibility to how we should be approaching it. Yeah, and Absolutely. I also appreciate the uh, revisiting Gary Vaynerchuk's ideas about deposits uh, deposits into the relationship. Mm-hmm. So um, one of the things that we definitely should should talk about. And I know you're here. You're not here to pitch a Weber per se, but you guys have um, because I always think about a Weber as sort of the innovators where autoresponders and lead nurturing <laughs> are concerned. Sure. Even though that wasn't yep. the language being used. Um, you guys did some stuff here several months ago now to really innovate along those lines because for a long time the AWeber product was just the gold standard in, in, in terms of setting up autoresponder. I mean, you, you know, like for example, before I let you answer the question I asked, uh, sure, sure. I, I, I loved the, my AWeber account because I could put up a different offer on different pages on my site. And it was so stupid simple to go set up an automated sequence that was just for that offer, right? Some of the yep. other systems that I had tested out, uh, back, especially back in 2007 when I was getting started with this stuff, um, you know, there was one sequence. If you were going to send any automated follow-up, it was one sequence no matter how they signed up. And it's like, sure. well, that makes no sense. You know, I need to I need to send specific follow up based on what they asked for. You know, so yep. well, but you guys have done some innovating. So can you talk about like some of the more recent developments on the platform and and uh, and how that's how that's affecting things for businesses? Yeah. So we introduced uh, campaigns, uh, which is kind of next evolution in in follow ups for us here at Aweber, um, and it's really just the. Uh, it's the, the starting point um, for a lot of really innovative and awesome stuff that we want to do with automation in 2016. Cool. Um, so we released this uh, in October, in, in beta in October of uh, last year. And really the, the premise of it right now is, so AWeber uh, is, has always been a list-based um, 
it, it basically a list based account, right? So right. when you add subscribers to uh, a list, you would add them to separate lists based on segments or interests, right? So, um, you know, let's say I have a, a an animal, I'll use a very terrible example. Let's say I have an animal blog. Um, if, if I'm on a, a blog post about cats and I have a lead magnet about cats, they would opt in and they would go into a cat's list. Um, or dogs, they would go into a dog's list, right? Um, now with campaigns, um, you have the opportunity to have them all go into the same list, right? Uh, so that you can manage your subscribers all in one list. Uh, but you can send them the relevant content the same way that you used to be able to, but now in a more dynamic way. Um, so you um, can so set you up can... welcome campaigns for all of your lead gen, um, for all of your lead magnets on relevance, right? So uh, cat series, dog series, and then you can daisy chain that into a main campaign so that when they finish their initial campaign, they all get entered into the same campaign, same lead nurturing campaign, right? Um, so you can send the custom relevant content uh, first, uh, and then you can maybe tailor it off uh, with some more generic content, more about you. Uh, and then you can all manage them within the same list, right? So it's moving more towards, and, and then you can tag them as well, right? Okay, so, so then then uh, I have a more global view of any given subscriber because like in historically with my AWeber account, I'm, I knew this because I was watching. And so I would know that maybe somebody had signed up for five of uh, different lists. And, but, yep. but, but I had to actually go look at each list in order to, for me to see where they were. Right. So from, from, there, there, so, yes, go ahead. those, those, uh, that, that record of that subscriber and the different lists, that record is not talking to each other. Right. So you don't have that global view to say that like, um, you know, Rod, for example, uh, likes digital marketing, traditional marketing, um, and publishing, you know, like he would be in three separate lists. Exactly. I couldn't look at one record of Rod to say like, here are all the things that he's tagged with. Um, and, and now with campaigns, you're able to do that. Right. So we're going to be able to create uh, better subscriber management, uh, better tagging and segmenting, um, more powerful automation. Uh, so one of the big things that we're really excited about um, is kind of uh, click based triggering, you know, so that if you yes. do engage with a certain piece of content Thank in you. an email, you you are going to be tagged with that, you know, like you, you are going to be able to set up a tag on the back end as an AWeber user. And so then will that say, tag like, drive like further automation from there? And that can drive further automation. Sweet. So you can qualify that subscriber, you know, just by being able to say that this subscriber likes clicking on long form content, you know, so yeah. like now you know that you can continue to nurture that subscriber with long form content. Or you can uh, send like a yes, no question out, that. right? Like you can say, hey, we're starting a new cat blog. I know you subscribe to our blo our dog blog, but we're, we're that's that rhymes. Yeah, that's fine. Dog blog. I know you subscribe to our dog blog, Rod. How would you like to be a, a you know, get our cat info? Too? And he can click yes or no. And now I can tag him with a yes, he has cats too or whatever. And yep, and yep. and then, but I don't have to send him back to the site, fill out a new form, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's because that's historically what I would have had to have done, right? That's really what you would have had. He would have had to have opt into a form, or you, or you would have to have moved that person manually, manually. over, yeah. uh, which is a labor laborious process. So, um, you know, the, really the basis for campaigns uh, is uh, marketers are getting more and more sophisticated year after year. And we want a Weber to be a tool that empowers you and enables you to do the level of sophistication that you want uh, in a very simple way. You know, like we want you to be able to do complex, sophisticated things using a very simple interface. Uh, so our goal is to take the simplicity and the ease of use with our autoresponders and follow-ups um, and then move that into a platform where you can do more complex, sophisticated things uh, but without all the headaches of you know trying to work with a complex system, love it. Um, so uh, we're really we're really excited with um, kind of the genesis of it. We're excited with uh, how beta is going. We're getting a lot of good feedback, um, and uh, we are beginning to roll out uh, the tagging functionality um, uh, this month. Cool. Uh, and then you know the the next big thing is going to be kind of this this click based trigger. Um, I don't have an ETA for that, uh, so don't hold me to anything. But yeah. I'm 
that's where I'm most excited for. Because I, that's where the fun happens. I, yeah. I call that funnel magic, right? So like if you have someone in a funnel and you can kind of uh, get them to do these kind of dynamic shifts in the content that you're you're serving them with just the click of a button, to me that's like magic, you know? So, I love it. Um, really looking forward to it. All right, so when you guys were sending yeah. out some of the emails back in October about, hey, this we're doing this big, big, big announcement, this big reveal, uh, do, work, yep. do more with email. I remember this email campaign you guys sent and I want to know if it's available yet for me to do this. And I'm, I think I already know what the answer is. But I'm going to ask anyway because it was the baddest thing I'd ever seen done in email. And so you guys sure. sent this campaign out, and it had a live Twitter feed in it. So you had the hashtag do more with email. And so yep. I, I got the email campaign. I have a picture of it on my screen right now, Rod, so you can see what I'm talking about. I see it. But we'll link out to this. This is It was the coolest thing. So then I'm like, well, I want to be in that email, you know? So I tweeted something about do more with email and I went back to my Gmail account, reopened your campaign, same campaign, and there was my tweet. <laughs> that was so it's slick. Amazing, right? Yeah. It's like, it was, it was like magic. Um, so I'm going to give a shout out uh, to one of our email designers, Kelsey. Um, so uh, Kelsey is the designer that implemented that. Um, and we're using a Weber with no, no craziness. So you can do it. Um, I'm not sure if we ever uh, break the time to document exactly how to do it. So maybe I was gonna say, man, if, a GitHub repo. Give me yeah, a, give me like, a. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't have we don't have any um you know kind of uh, interface or way to just like jump in and do it uh, right now. But I should have the team document it um, just because of how awesome it is. Uh, so that if you if you find the use case for it and you want to use it, that you can go in and do that. Kelsey, you rock. All right. So if you have a GitHub repo or you want to create one or whatever, uh, we'll we'll make noise about it because that was just the slickest thing. And of course, we should say it's risky, <laughs> right? Because you never know what's going to show. I'd love to know if she had any filtering or anything else in there. I don't know. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. But anyway, that was a really slick. Uh, that was a, such a slick trick. That's I love it. Yeah. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll get some uh, some tips and tricks on how to do that for sure. I love it. I love it. Now I I'm sure you guys have an opt in or something that you would love to uh, to drive our listeners to and uh, and so I'd love for you to share like what's the best way for someone who's interested in Aweber to learn more. Yeah. So if you go to uh, honestly, um, you know I, I'm gonna just say go to the blog, right? So if you go to blog.aweber.com, um, that's where you're going to see some of the great content that we're producing, um, and you know. When you're perusing, uh, you are going to get prompted for opting in for uh, some of our really quote unquote lead, lead magnets, uh, right? So we do like to practice what we preach and deliver value uh -huh. uh, in exchange for your email address. Um, but yeah, right I would definitely front. say uh, check out blog.aweber.com. Um, the content uh, is super relevant, uh, you know, regardless of what level of experience you're at. Um, we're putting out a podcast once a week, uh, so that's ask me about email marketing. That was my uh, next thing I was going to bring us. up. Perfect. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It's been great. It started out with us kind of uh, talking to ourselves, you know, so our customers would ask us a question and then uh, somebody here at Aweber would answer. But I just started interviewing external guests, um, which has been a lot of fun. So uh, check out the podcast, check out the blog. Um, when you stumble upon, you know, a prompt uh, to get one of our PDF guides or one of our ebooks um, or checklists, um, they're all awesome, so definitely check that out. And uh, we we kind of craft each one with uh, with a reader in mind and with 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 a lot of care. So definitely check that out. Yeah, you guys do have great content. So uh, what we'll do with in our show notes, as we always do, we provide links and everything. So we'll link out to the Aweber sure. blog. If you guys, if any of our listeners have you don't already have an email service provider. Um, and you like what you're hearing, I want to encourage you. I have been a huge fan of Aweber for a long time, so check it out. But you can also use, we have an affiliate link. So if you want to support Grow the Dream Show at the same time, then you are welcome to just visit growthedream.com slash email. And uh, if you hit growthedream.com slash email, that'll bounce you right back over to Aweber and check out all that content that Tom's talking about. And then if you do happen to sign up down the road, you decide, hey, this is the right uh, tool for you, then hey, you, it's a way that you can just say thank you to Grow the Dream Show and show your support for us at the same time that you're uh, getting your hands on an awesome product and, uh, and, and, and getting all of the great stuff that goes along with that. So that's an option. You're certainly welcome to just go straight to aweber.com and buy directly from them or not. You know, just uh, But definitely, whatever you do, sign up for the blog because it's really, really good stuff. And I have, I've enjoyed, I haven't listened to every episode of the podcast, Tom, so I've heard a couple and I'm sure. loving them. I knew you were on the road. Um, and so are you uh, Are you going to be doing that more, to, uh, traveling to uh, events and conferences and stuff? 
Yeah, we'll be at uh, Podcast Movement uh, this year, so we're really excited for that. Fantastic. Um, so that's going to be in July in Chicago. That'll be a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, we our, our team typically uh, kind of divides and conquers. So, like, our content team will go out to different content uh, types of um, conferences. I was at uh, Digital Marketers Traffic and Conversion Summit a couple weeks ago, and, uh, you know, the podcast squad will go to the podcast movement. So, fun. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, I, I will say, if, if you are not going to use Grow the Dream Show's affiliate link uh, and you're going to uh, choose not to support them, at least go, you know, leave an iTunes review or something, right? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. you I gotta appreciate support, that. You, you got to support the show somehow. But yeah, by all means, um, uh, thanks for sharing that. And definitely uh, su- support Grow the Dream Show and use that affiliate link. Uh, we would love to have you try us. It's currently a 30-day trial, so... Um, it's risk risk free on your end. Yeah, yeah, love it, and uh, and and you're gonna find it's a fantastic experience. Um, I've enjoyed the upgrades you guys have made over the years. Like, uh, you know, just uh, the editor and and that interface, the whole process from a from a user standpoint, just continually improving. So, uh, to you and the uh, and the product cool. development team for for great work on that. And uh, with that, I mean, you know, we have jam-packed this episode with, with uh, I think, a lot of useful stuff. I hope so. Absolutely. And, uh, Tom, so we want to thank you for, for joining us. And um, if you are not yet following, as our listener, if you're not yet following Tom Tate on Twitter, you can find him at TNRT. I'm so jealous of your four digit, four character Twitter yeah, handle. I, how did, I mean, seriously, man. <laughs> how did I got you get, lucky. Yeah? You didn't hack got, someone I got or lucky something? With that one. No, I didn't have that one for a long time. Uh, for a while, uh, my Twitter handle was actually at failed wordsmith uh, oh, no. because, I, again, like I said, I was trying to be that struggling. That's a pretty uh, good one, novelist, actually, though. Uh, <laughs> and I just, I just owned, I just owned my title of being a failure. Uh, but then I shifted over to TNRT, and luckily it was available. So that ah, rocks, man. It. Actually, I got to tell you, 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 yeah. are, you are not actually a failed wordsmith because you've had a lot of nice little phrases throughout the show. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. Definitely. 30 years in journalism cool. and you're still evaluating. I mean, you, you just have to evaluate I'd people never based stop. on their words. Yeah, just never stop. <laughs> so, I love it. Good stuff. Well, listen, I would, I would appreciate it if you guys would return the favor. I would love to have you guys on our podcast someday. Oh, that'd be a blast. Oh, Absolutely. We'd love to. Yeah. If you can, yep. if you can tolerate yeah, three, stuff. three talking heads at one time, you, you know, we're, we're there. Or there might not be room for <laughs> Yeah. We might, since, you know, too many millennials on the same show might be, you know, might be a little much. <laughs> I, th- I think I think we could I think we could uh, make it work. So I'll, I'll be in touch for sure. Sounds Wonderful. good, man. Thanks, Tom. Hey, appreciate it, and oh. uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll look forward to uh, whatever may come of that. Awesome. Yeah, sounds great. Thanks for listening to the Grow the Dream Show. We invite you to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. Get connected to our growing community. Add your comments. Ask questions. And listen to the archives on the web at growthedream.com slash show.